I'll look for them for you. I'll look for you. We can work together and find them because it's not me. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Miraculous Ladybug New York Special Analysis. Spectacular. Spectacular. Today, we are doing an analysis of the Miraculous Ladybug New York Special. Yes, and by analysis, we're just going to give our thoughts. Uh -oh. Yeah. We watched, I watched it twice. I watched it three times. Yeah, so we're just going to go through, see what we thought about it, you know. The highlights, the low points. Mm-hmm. The surprises. There were a lot of surprises. Yeah. All right. So let's get into the um, the New York yeah, special. The New York special. So. We give a synopsis of what the New York special. No, is? we don't need the synopsis. Go watch it. Okay. Go watch it and then come back. Yes, and then come back here. So starting off for first impressions, when the we were excited about it. The intro was like Marvel. It was giving us strong Marvel vibes. It was. And it just looks very theatrical compared to the actual, the regular show. Exactly. And we appreciated that. Yeah. It's like, oh, something different. It made you feel like you were watching a special, a TV special. Yes. Um, anyway, first thing I noticed, I think you noticed the same thing too. Yes. Was, was Marinette's voice. voice. It was very, um, how do you very say? Very mature. <clears throat> yeah, it sounded like a grown woman. <laughs> yeah. I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> Since when did Marinette turn 27? Yeah. Uh, I'm already saying that. She's giving me 27 vibes. Yes. And she's supposed to be 14. So that's a big jump when you sound and 27. And I got, I got used to it. I'm not, I didn't like it at first. Yeah. I'm still not sure if I like it, but I'm okay with it. Because it, it sounded like a grown woman was crushing and obsessing over a 14-year-old boy at some it point. Did. I was like, this is a little odd. But... They said it's the same person, right? Yeah, it's yeah. still Christina V. It's the same voice actor. So when I found out it was the same person, I'm not as upset. So it was okay. Yeah. She just, they use less auto-tune or something. I don't know. Yeah. And Thomas Astruck actually responded to a fan who asked the question of why their voices were lower. And he said, this is the season where Marinette is growing up. She is maturing. So her voice is going to reflect her growth. Yeah, in some ways more than other. Mm -hmm. Some days, she, sometimes she's still... Screaming. Very much so. And squeaming. Yeah. The squeamish. Little, very squeamish. And yeah. Then. She still can't sit next to her crush on a train ride, which is very concerning. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, so the second thing I put in my notes was, um, well, let's go to your second thing. Mine really jumps a lot. Oh. Marinette's confidence. She was super confident in the beginning of the show when they are talking about, oh, we're going to New York for a friendship week with Paris and and the United States. And they're like, oh, we're super excited. But then Adrian is sad because since his father is very overprotective and really strict, he's not allowed to go, which we all assume. And then Marinette was like, no, we have to stand up for a friend. I would never let a friend down. I'm gonna vouch for you. So she goes to Adrian's father's house, the Gabriel household, the Gabriel sure, Agress household, household mm -hmm. and she vouches for him. She's just like, you have to let him go because he's my friend and we all want him to go. And I thought, wow, like. Yeah, she came in there real aggressive like. She, her ladybug was showing, you know? Her <laughs> ladybug your, your, was showing. Her ladybug is showing. Right? She said thanks. That's uh -huh. what I, I really liked. I'm gonna go in, so I, I agree with all that, whatever, or whatever. Or whatever. Um, I, my second notes was, um, the purple hair lady. The, okay, so <laughs> when know? when they were in really class, know. the science teacher. Oh, Miss Miss Mendelea. Miss Mendelea, how mm -hmm. like pissed and sad she looked yeah. when they said, "Oh no, she's going with us," and she was like, "Yeah." All sad, really sad. Um, didn't really do much for the show, but I felt for her. People said that they said it was a random moment that didn't have any resolution. I feel like sometimes you get to have random moments like that. Like it's, it doesn't really matter, but no. you might as well have something happen. Like, yeah. But, but she's having her own. She's the main character in her own story. Yeah. So let, let's let her have. She's that having moment. her own, her own plot, her own climax. But that's actually people. People don't be caring about you. So. And it's only because happens. the other teacher. I'm forgetting her name, but there is a favorite teacher. They've had episodes where it's established that all the characters love this teacher. Yeah, but she was pregnant. She was pregnant. She got knocked up, so. No, <laughs> she, she had a baby with her husband. Well, she, <laughs> she still, knocked up. She still kind of knocked up. Kind she of. wanted to expand her family. Um, I also have that 
a big moment for me was when um, Marinette, um, so the whole situation, Marinette didn't text Adrian. Oh yeah. So a a she went over there to tell her dad, tell Adrian's dad about, you know, you know, he deserves to go on this trip. She was really, you know, pleading his case. Mm -hmm. And then she, I guess, fails to text him or tell them, oh yeah, your dad said yes. Your dad said yes. You can so go. then when Cat you are, was going to Ladybug. He's like, yeah, have a great trip, um, Ladybug. I'll stay here in Paris. And this was like a full day. Full day. It after was. After Marinette. It was um, that night. Yeah, so I'm like, so she went, she literally, Marinette literally went home after talking, had time to go home. Change. Maybe go turn to Ladybug. Yeah. Do this whole venture and fail to text um, Adrian. Or not even just her, none of her friends. I was thinking that too, because you best believe Nino was there. They were all there. Yeah, they were outside the door. All like. of the friends were there. So I'm just real confused on why Nino didn't text him. But maybe they wanted it to be a surprise. Probably. I guess I could see that. They, okay, that's a good that's a good example. But it ended up. I would have liked everybody. a little moment of explaining that. <coughs> a little mm. moment of them saying, "Bro, let's text Adrian. Let him know we can come." Yeah. And then them saying, "That was a good impression, you know." By the way. <laughs> I killed that. I killed that. But then Marinette's like, no, we should make it a surprise. Like that would have been cool. Just a little moment in case some of us made that connection. Well, I didn't. Because later, this becomes an issue. The fact that Cat Noir didn't know. It it does. It becomes an issue. That whole stuff. But, yeah. Oh. Uh, I think that that's early on. That is early on. So basically, uh, this this stems from one scene. It's still it's, from literally one clip. Just, just the scene where um. Because they didn't have to, but they did. Yeah, it's the scene where um he's looking out the window, and he's talking to his assistant. Mm -hmm. But she's like in bed, and this is us reading into it's it. It's us reading into it. This is a kids show, but it just it's seems a kid's like show, but it's also a why is, show. She's obviously in her bed. I don't know if she's relaxing. Is she sick? Who knows. Cause she did, she gets dizzy spells a lot because she uses the broken peacock miraculous, which drains her energy. So she is sick a lot. Yeah. But it was the fact that she was on one end of the bed. It, I don't think it was that. To me, it was I didn't notice that. She's on one side. I just thought it was funny that he has a relationship with his staff where they're sleeping in a bed in his house, and then he's going in there just talking to them while they're in bed. That was. But that seems like you're like awfully close to your like assistant. Yeah. I don't think he'd be doing that for the. Whatever, his for the gorilla? Guy. For the gorilla guy. No. Just uh, chilling in the room. Hey, what you doing? But yes, I, I definitely noticed that too. I wrote, Marinette sabotages her chance to sit next to Adrian. I would have been, see, if I, I got the it. opportunity, she what? got the opportunity to sit directly Why next. can't she sit next to her friend? Thank you. People sit next to their friends. Friends a lot. So. She, as soon as he, he came on the plane, he ran up to her and was like, hey, Marinette. Like, what's your seat number? Let's, like, maybe we're sitting together. And they were. Damn. But she was too squeamish and was like, I can't sit next to my crutch. And it's like, I would have been all over it. So yes. I would have sat on. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I would have sat on. I would have sat on. I would have been like, what are we listening to? I have to. I would have already had that um, aux cord where you can connect two different headphones. Mm, yeah. I would have already brought that in case. Because you got to stay ready. If you know you're going Just to, in case. Just in case yeah. I get the opportunity. To sit next to the one I love, you have to be ready. I agree. I would have been gotta, ready. You gotta be ready. Did you think that Adrian's actions on the plane, going out of his way to talk to her, do you think it was just being friendly, or did you think that it no, was? No, no, I think it was friendly. Okay. Like I, I told you this before, I, I feel like since um, he probably really appreciated the fact that he went to his house and talked to his father Absolutely. to convince him to go on this trip. That's big. So if somebody did that for me. I'd be getting her back too. Like, yo, you're an A1. Yeah. Like, you obviously care a lot about me, so let me return the favor. Yeah, let me interact with you. Yeah, so she showed herself to be a really great friend. She so he's did. probably just trying to, like, um, you know, um, show her that same respect. Yeah. I will say, though, so on my, on my notes, it was completely unrelated to Adrian and um, Marinette. It was Techno Pirate. What's his, do you find out yeah. his name? Is that it? That's his name, Techno Pirate, yeah. So. He's a villain who steals technology. <laughs> yes. And I, that just kind of made me upset. Tell me why this guy decides. He, keep in mind, he didn't know that Adrian and then we're Cat Noir. He didn't care. No. He's up there robbing a random plane. A random plane. So t if you're a t if you're out here trying to steal technology. steal technology, why would you, your first instinct, 
find a plane that's thousands of feet in the air, which is harder to get to. Hard, how did, yeah, I guess he can fly. Why would he just not go to an airport where there's many planes, some that are unattended, Yeah. and just steal the ones where he could easily get away? Instead, he chose to find one that's 5,000 feet in the air, and then harder to get to, and would end up killing a bunch of kids. Like, many casualties. He could have saved lives and gotten more planes if he would have just stole some at the middle of the night in, at an airport. Now this is totally unrelated to the maybe show. Maybe he's a reckless, like malicious kind of he techno wanted, pirate. Maybe he wanted death. As many deaths as possible to make a bigger, yes. uh, to bring notice, call notice to the United States. I just would hope he'd notice now that it's harder to rob a plane that's currently moving. The next one I have is hot dog scene. I jumped for really far. Okay, they're, now they're in New York. They've arrived. Yes, the hot dog scene was a lot for me. That, now the hot dog scene is, is the hot dog scene is obviously like the most famous one. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be the one people remember. Isn't that the one that they released as a little promo? Early, like a little. I didn't see that, but I am. I would imagine they would because it's like the romantic. Mm -hmm. I just think it's funny. I wrote down um, that was it. Um, Marinette's friend, Alia. Alia already had the song that they pulled up. Okay, so this is either best friend gold or <laughs> everybody just knew, but she knew this was their song. Like immediately, mm -hmm. she's like, oh, let me get their song together and then play it real quick. Mm -hmm. She already knew. She already had it. So she pulled played up that song. On YouTube. And then, on top of that, Adrian immediately knew that was their song that they danced to like a year ago. And I think, okay, if you don't. If you like somebody, that's the only way you're gonna remember. You pay attention to moments where you're one on one. Because I don't have, I don't have like, oh, this is our song with people I don't like. No. Or I, yeah, per me personally. I don't, I don't remember most. If I remember conversations with you, it's because I really like you. Yeah. I don't remember conversations with people that I just. I mean, like, eh. you remember conversations with your friends. Like, oh, I remember we talked about that. I do, yeah. I, if you're my friend, I do remember conversations. But remember, you're like, like this, my is, friends. this is our song. I'm like, I don't think I have a song with friends. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I, I mean, don't. I just don't have a lot of friends. So. Mm -hmm. Or if you don't have a lot of friends, it's easier to remember. The I like yeah. is, is good too. So I, I think so. The, yeah, yeah, that's a good point of that. Like, is Adrian starting to catch feelings for Marinette? Because he's remembering. He's remembering things. He's remembering things. Can we talk about the, when she finds out that Cat Noir is in New York? Yes, because, yes, because yeah. they're in the museum. They're in the museum. That's also get, where my next note is as well. Okay. They get locked in, um, I'm trying not to summarize, but <laughs> that moment where she's like, um, Cat Noir, what are you doing here? He's like, what are you doing here? She's like, where's Marinette? She's like, I got her to safety, but why aren't you in Paris? He's like, I'll explain can later. I, can, I, can I cut in there for a second? Yeah. Because this is the part I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Because... You mentioned that. So, as soon as Marinette... I mean, as soon as Marinette trains into um, Ladybug, mm -hmm. and same for... Um, same for Adrian. For Adrian. They both transfer. Yeah. Um, Cat Noir comes up and says... Where's Marinette? Where's Marinette? And I'm like, hmm. and then Ladybug says, I put her to safety. Why would, if Cat Noir is not Adrian, why wouldn't he come by and say, hey, where are the two teens? Thank you. Like, That's... Where are the two teens? Where, where's, where's Marinette and Adrian? And Adrian. But he had no regard. He could care less where Adrian was. Because he's him, obviously. Because he's him. Yeah. But then Ladybug didn't say, where's Adrian either? No, she, she wasn't focused on that. It's just funny that... Yeah. Obviously, um, Ladybug was worried about why Cat's even there. Yeah. But I'm just trying to figure out, they if you saw Marinette, you would have saw Adrian too. They're both yeah. in the same room. They're the only two people in the entire room. Yeah. So this just goes back to the conspiracy, like how are they not figuring how it out? Not... Because... No, it's two. They have figured it out. And I love those episodes. There are two episodes where Adrian puts two and two together and says, maybe Marinette is Ladybug. But then there's that episode where she literally cloned herself and like shook hands with Marinette as Ladybug. So if you see that, That's, that wipes away any suspicion. I forgot about that. That's true. And I get. And he, he did the same thing. He had his friend Wayne, who's obsessed with him. He had him put on his outfit and was like, thanks Adrian for helping. Thanks bro. So they both have seen Adrian and Cat Noir and Ladybug the in the same room, shaking yeah. hands. 
it just sucks. I, when I saw that, I was like, I'm sorry. Or you can ignore the fact that yeah. he did that. But yeah, that was good. If you've seen stuff like that. So the directors, they're trying to cover their yeah. tracks. Why, why is it okay that people in America can unmask each other in front of each other and it not be the end of the world? But for some reason in Paris, that's yeah, an like, issue. Like it's a huge issue. Like, are there different rules for miraculouses? I think so. Because mirac the miraculous, all the miraculouses, they come from really ancient, like Ch China, they come from China. Uh -huh. And then once the guardian, who is Chinese, once he relocated to Paris, he just started that culture and started to give it out to Parisians. So, you know, in China, they're very conservative. You know, it's the culture. You gotta save face, keep respect, honor your family. <laughs> so, in order to honor and save face, people can't know that you're a superhero by night. That's why I guess Americans just don't care about their family. I mean, we've never been about saving face. We've been about, this is me, 100%. We're about authenticity and freedom. But we've never been about... <laughs> conservative yeah we want all the glory when we, we want all the glory yeah. when we start saving the world we're like yeah it's me yeah it was me <laughs> i need a paycheck mm -hmm. okay that's good um i wonder if they do get paid do you think they get compensated are they on anyone's payroll okay hmm. um yeah well sure i have another huge moment for me i got triggered so after the whole museum incident the the parents come in what, yeah. is it, what do you remember their names? I forgot their names. Captain America. What's her name? The woman who's Captain the American person. Yeah. And then the owl. Yeah, Night Owl. Night Owl. Mm -hmm. They come in, guns blazing. What are you doing, Ladybug? Oh and yeah. Moore? You're not even supposed to be here in America. Mm -hmm. And then they say, "Give us your." Yeah, they well, said, because they did. We can't speak over that because Cat Noir did kill their daughter temporarily. He actually cataclysm hammer in their throat. Oh, she did. Yeah. I forgot about that part. He, cas he cataclysmed her in the throat and then she fell dead. So that's why they were like, you, you're causing so much damage. What is your little miraculous ladybug tool going to do? She's like, I think I can fix it. She said, today. I'll show you. Right? She's <laughs> like, I'll show you. <laughs> miraculous I, ladybug. The reason I was pissed is because he said that after, Night Owl said that mm -hmm. after, after Ladybug, Performed a current day resurrection. <laughs> yes. She literally resurrected she literally, their little yeah. robot daughter yeah. from the ground up. And then she, Night Owl was still pissed. He's still pissed. Is your daughter she, she not alive? Like, she's like, oh no, we still need your miraculous. If it wasn't for my miraculous, your daughter would still be dead. Yeah. So I was like, I'm sorry. We just gonna ignore the fact that she raised your daughter from the dead. And funny thing is, Night Owl didn't go over and check on the daughter. <laughs> she could care less. Which is funny. That's a whole nother um, family issue right family there. Issue. That's a heart issue. That's a heart, <laughs> that's a heart issue. That's a heart issue right there. Because <laughs> Night Owl wasn't worried about the daughter. That's an issue. She was worried about um, Cat Noir. Well, but but, it, but right. um, hand clap to um, Ladybug, Cat Noir being like, yeah, we're not doing that. They bounce. I love that. They're like, hand over your miraculous. You'll get it when you leave the country. And then she whispered to Cat Noir, we ain't doing nothing. We're not doing nothing. Yeah. And then they bounced. And I, who knows? Maybe Ladybug first season would have gave her over. Who knows? She's like, yeah, you're right. She's but grown nowadays now. she's like, <laughs> no. Yeah, authority who? She's authority who? I stopped listening to my parents when I was guy. 12. Yeah, she's love. And Adrian's like, I, I sneak out constantly. <laughs> my dad never really knows where I am. Yeah. So. Yeah, Adrian picks when he wants to do his dad. He does. He picks and chooses. Sometimes he's like a scare, sometimes he doesn't care at all. I really like the moment where he. He feels discouraged because he killed a person. Ladybug fixed it, oh, but yeah. he still killed a person. And he's like, I can't be Cat Noir anymore. I'm so sorry. Oh yeah, Paris. They look on their little phones to see how their home city is doing and Paris is in shambles. And Cat Noir is like, we'll just go back to Paris and fix everything. And she's like, no, my miraculous Ladybug power only works to like fix what a villain did specifically. I can't just do it on a villain I can't do it on multiple villains. Mm -hmm. It has to be for a specific situation. It's true. So she's like, Paris is just in shambles. I can't fix that. And I love that because a lot of the fan base were thinking, when Ladybug messes up, Cat Noir's response is, it's okay. Um, everyone makes mistakes. I yeah. know, I know, um, 
constantly <laughs> extending grace. Yes, he's constantly extending grace. But when Cat Noir messes up, it's I can't trust you. She yeah, she really be on that. She said that I can't even trust you anymore. Yeah. How do you expect me to ever trust you with anything? Yeah. You're a bad person. <laughs> I hate you. Um, you suck. Yeah. So I was like, no grace from Ladybug. She be coming so, after him, making him feel heck of bad. Yeah. She was just like, I'm not, she's like, I'm not saying you should kill yourself, but. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, cat. I mean, wow, ladybug. Like, she, can you get a break? She can be really harsh. Yeah. Because she's a perfectionist. But then again, she um she came back and said. Yeah, because you know. he was like, he denounced his Kwame. Like, I don't want to be cat noir anymore. The last note I had correlates exactly with the end of the episode with the old man coming in and he having came, an attitude. He came in with an attitude. He came in truly too hard. <laughs> I said, and. She responded better than I would have. She did. I would have been like, first of all, I don't know who you think you are, but you're not my mom no. or my father. Or not even my uncle. No. So I don't know who you think you are. It's like, I need you to explain. That, that's you the whole. Are you talking to me? Because right. I don't know. Who I, I said, I know you're not going to cut. He said, do you, I don't know what he said verbatim. I know. I all I know is that he down. ended with, and I'm having a rough day, and I'm not in the mood. Not in the mood, child. So he would give it back with no fucks. He said, with no fucks. He said, because I am not in the mood. Not in the mood. Give me the miraculous. I said, no, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I, I have two words. No, no, no sir. sir. You're not going to play me today. Absolutely not. And she react, she reacted great. She's like, um, I understand how you're feeling, but let's just work together and we can start a new revolution. Yeah. I would say better than me. Better than me. I would have kept moving. You must not be talking to me, so I'm going to keep going. <laughs> and then when you learn how to talk to me, like I read another person. I'll go and try to look for the person you were talking I'll, to. I'll, I'll look I for the person. I'll, I'll look for them for you. I'll look for them for we you. can work together and find them because it's not me. <laughs> Cause you're not gonna, cause no one talks to me like that. <laughs> <laughs> no one talks to me like <laughs> But yeah, I didn't like the way he talked to her. But that might be a me problem. Uh, no, because even mom, mom was like, uh, like, even watching it, mom was like, he said, I'm not in the mood, child. He said child? Yeah, he said, I'm not in the mood, child. Give it back with no fuss. That's some ageism right there. Like, no matter how much you save the world, people still, you're just a kid. Like, I'm a kid who saved your butt. Right. Or a marinette, I'm, or a lady butt. I'm a kid who raised your kid from the dead. Mm hmm like, the only other person who did that was Jesus, so. <laughs> right, so you can either call me superhero or call me your Lord and Savior. No. <laughs> because I'm, I'm both. <laughs> no, no we, we don't say Lady Bugs Lord and Savior. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> but the she do be saving a lot. She do be saving, but she ain't the Lord. <laughs> she ain't close. She's a close second. But anyway, uh, we didn't go over everything that happened in the movie. This was just our, like, Quick thoughts. Yeah, quick thoughts. Highlights. Highlights. Oh, we were excited for the Shanghai special. We are excited for the Shanghai special. Um, will it be quick? Will it come soon? No. No. It might come. They said uh, early 2022. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit. It's going to be a little bit. But, but um, we still got season four coming up and the miraculous movie, Ladybug and Cat Noir Awakening. You can't forget that. Um, so. so we'll be, yeah. This is our first video talking about Miraculous, so... Yeah, this was fun. I this hope to do this again. I really like this. Cool, yeah, we should do it again. Um, yeah, thank you for watching. Thanks, guys. Miraculous. <laughs> <laughs> well, pound it.